Elton John. Why not? He's going to retire this year, he says. He's on the last leg of his tour, so I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It really will help me an awful lot. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Oh yeah, Elton John. I remember being in high school and listening to him on the jukebox at the A&W uh, root beer that was uh, just outside the high school. And uh, all throughout my life, he's been a background um, there. So, Elton John. So, I wicked him. Sure I did. And here's what I got. I condensed it down to just a couple pages in a little bit. Uh, so, in 1945, his parents were married. And then in 1947, two years later, Reginald Kenneth Dwight was born on March 25th. So, he's an Aries and uh, from Pinner, Middlesex. And uh, the U, uh, people in the UK may know where that is. And then um, he's the eldest child of Stanley and the only child of Sheila, and uh, raised in a council house in Pinner by his maternal uh, grandparents. Uh, he was educated at Pinner Wood Junior High, Redford School, and Pinner County Grammar School. And in 1954, at age seven, Reginald. Uh, started playing his grandmother's piano and began formal lessons. In 1958, at age 11, Reggie won a junior scholarship to the Royal Academy of Music. An instructor said he promptly played back a four-page piece by Handel, uh, almost like a gramophone record, uh, after he heard it just once and for, for the first time ever. Uh, he attended Saturday-only classes in central London, but before uh, he left before um, the final exams. And that's going to be a theme in his life, you'll see. So in 1961, when he was 14, his parents divorced. His mother married a local painter, and the family moved to an eight-unit apartment building where he lived until he had four albums simultaneously in the American Top 40. So he was with his parents right up through and into his fame. Uh, but in 1962, at age 15, with his mother's and stepfather's help, uh, Reggie was hired as a piano player at a nearby pub. And uh, so, wow, that's at 15. And he and friends formed a band called Bluesology. Uh, by day, he ran errands for a music publishing company, and uh, his nights were split between solo gigs and bluesology. And in the mid-1960s, the band was backing American soul and R&B musicians touring uh, his part of England. In 1964, at 17, he left school just prior to his A-levels and uh, examinations for music. And, uh, well, he left for music. And his father tried to steer him towards banking, though his father himself uh, had been a semi-professional trumpet player uh, with a big band. So. In 1967, Reggie, or Reg, answered an advertisement in a British music mag. Uh, they gave him an envelope of lyrics by Bernie Taupin, and, uh, he, and he, Bernie had answered the same, same ad six months uh, earlier. And then uh, Reg began going by Elton John, which is a homage to two members of Bluesology, Elton Dean and Long John uh, Baldry. And in 1970, Elton John, the album, was released in the UK and the US, and Your Song, remember Your Song, uh, reached number seven in the UK and number eight in the the US and as Elton's first hit single and it became his uh, hit album and number four on the US uh, Billboard 200 and number five on the UK chart. So his American concert, uh, first American concert was at the Troubadour in LA, a big success and the album Tumbleweed Connection uh, reached two in the UK and five uh, in the US and in 1971 Bernie Taupin, Bernie and, er and Elton uh, wrote the soundtrack to a film and then the uh, album Mad Men Across the Water which reached at number eight in the U.S. and uh, with hit songs Levon and Tiny Dancer, you may remember. 1972, Reginald Kenneth Dwight legally changed his name to Elton Hercules John. And uh, Bernie would write a batch of lyrics in under an hour and give it to Elton, who would write the music in half an hour, tossing out whatever he couldn't uh, come up with quickly. And a music publisher advised them to write complex songs for Elton to record. And in 1972, Honky Tonk Chateau, that album, uh, became Elton's number one U.S. Uh, album. Uh, it was a number one, beginning a streak of seven consecutive number one albums in the U.S. It had singles uh, Rocket Man and Honky Cat. 
1973, his album produced, uh, oh yeah, Crocodile Rock, Daniel, and Goodbye Yellow Brick Road topped the chart on both sides of the Atlantic and established Elton as a glam rock star. It had been, uh, oh, it had Benny and the Jets, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Candle in the Wind, Saturday Night's Alright for Fighting, man. In 1974, uh, Elton formed his own label, The Rocket Company, but he signed acts like Neil Sedaka and some others. He didn't perform for that label. And then uh, he signed an $8 million contract with MCA, who took out a $25 million insurance policy on his own life. Then in 1975, his autobiographical uh, album, Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy, another great album, uh, debuted at number one in the U.S. and the first album, uh, his first album anyway, maybe the first album ever to do so, and stayed there for seven weeks. And he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. 1977, Elton announced he was retiring from performing. 1977, okay? He was retiring from, retiring from performing. In 1979, he became one of the first Western artists to tour uh, Soviet Union and Israel, and this is also when he and Taupin uh, reunited from uh, Elton's retirement a couple years earlier. 1984, Elton wrote songs for The Lion King, then at the 67th Academy Awards, three of the five nominees for the Best Award for Best Original Song were from The Lion King. Lion King. And Elton won for uh, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Uh, those and uh, Circle of Life became hits. Uh, Can You Feel the Love Tonight won the 37th Annual Grammy Award and the soundtrack for The Lion King was at the top of the Billboard 200 for nine weeks. And then uh, Elton married his close friend and sound engineer, Miss Renate Blau. And uh, the marriage lasted for three years. In 1990, Elton finally achieved his first UK solo number one hit single with Sacrifice. So we remember that. It's still playing on the radio. 19, well, they're all still playing on the radio. 1992, Elton released album and, and song The One. They were both named The One. It was his first album recorded entirely sober. And Elton signed a music publishing deal for $39 million for 12, over 12 years, including the largest cash advance in music publishing history. Uh, 1970, uh, 1994, he was inducted in the, hall, uh, rock, in the rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Hard to say. And 1995, he, was, he released the album uh, Made in England. The title track is an autobiographical recounting of parts of his life. And not too much more here. 1997, uh, Elton Hercules John held a 50th birthday party, costume as Louis XIV, with 500 friends. Two of his close friends died, Johnny Versace and Diana Princess of Wales, and he asked Bernie to revise the lyrics of their 1973 song, Candle in the Wind, to honor Diana, and performed it live for the only time at Diana's funeral in Westminster Abbey. Uh, in 2000, by this time, he disliked appearing uh, in his own uh, music videos. And in 2003, Elton announced he had signed an exclusive agreement to perform 75 shows over three years at Caesars Palace. And then in 2007, Elton performed at Madison Square Garden for the record-breaking 60th time for his 60th birthday. In 2010, he performed a piano duet with Lady Gaga at the 52nd Granule Amy Awards, and Elton released the Union album, uh, a collaboration with American singer-songwriter uh, Leon Russell, and Elton said, he, he, I don't have to make pop music anymore. That's what he said. Uh, then jump to 2017. Lots of stuff happened in between, but jump to 2017. It was announced he would compose the score for a Broadway musical version of The Devil Wears Prada and the film. In 2018, it was announced that Elton was retiring from touring again and would embark on a three-year farewell tour to end in 2023. Um, Elton signed an agreement with UMG to represent his new music, new music for the rest of his career plus work from the last 50 years and then in uh, 2019 a biopic about elton john's life from his childhood to the 1980s rocket man was released he released his first and only autobi autobiography called me and as part of his farewell tour elton was presented with france's highest civilian honor uh the legion of honor and in 2020, his first show in Auckland, New Zealand was cut short. He lost his voice because of walking pneumonia. And then due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the remainder of the tour was postponed indefinitely. Elton played piano on Ozzy Osbourne's rock ballad, Ordinary Man. He performed a duet with Lady, Lady Gaga, uh, Cine From Above, I believe is what it is, for her album. And then in 2021, Elton announced a new collaboration album, The Lockdown Sessions. Uh, made during the COVID-19 lockdown, and at 74 years, 7 months, 14 days, Elton became the oldest artist to hit the top of the ARIA singles chart. Uh, Elton's duet with Ed Sheeran was also this year called Merry Christmas that was released. And in 2022, 
Elton John continued his farewell tour for the first time since the start of the pandemic, but it had to postpone two shows uh, in Dallas after testing positive for uh, for COVID-19 and experiencing mild symptoms, and that's where we are really right now. So let's pull the cards. So this is another Los Scarabillo, the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. And so these are super gilded is what's the deal with these, all in the right of weight uh, iconography kind of. And a typical uh, instruction booklet that's, you know, not that great and a little bit difficult to read. But the um, what's good here is in the cards. They're kind of handy to use, so that's all good. And look at how beautiful they are. I don't know if it shows up as well on the camera as it does in person, but when you use these in person, I mean, they are really stunning, and someone feels like they're getting their money's worth. So we mix them up like this so that we kind of get our, our uh, energy into the cards, and sometimes it's good to lift the querent, um, you know, get their hands on them just for a minute, and then people get more involved. You know, once you've touched it, it's, uh, it's more appealing. So here we go, we'll get this going. <laughs> okay, Elton John. Let's see what the cards can tell us about Elton John. What I've got, I've got four questions. So three of them will be three card pulls. And then the last uh, question is really a uh, full Celtic cross uh, for uh, Elton's future. So let's see what the cards can tell us about Elton John. What can the cards tell us about Elton John? But first, let's have just a moment. Of meditation. Here we go. So very interesting fella. I mean, this guy, his music has been uh, part of my life uh, from the time I was a teenager in school up until present day, really. Um, so that album, The Union, with uh, Leon Russell is amazing. And uh, let's just see what the cards can tell us. So the first question is going to be, will Elton John actually retire? Will Elton John actually retire? I believe his retirement refers to his uh, touring, which I understand is a mixed bag for him. He likes and he loves and he hates and uh, is, is taxing. So will Elton John actually retire? Three cards. One, two, three. Will Elton John actually retire? Three cards. First card. Okay, so what is this card? This is the 11. This is uh, Justice. Hmm. So uh, this is the Major Arcana. This is about halfway through the uh, Major Arcana. And uh, justice is just that. It's an equal measure of truth and law. And uh, so that's interesting. Let's see what the second card is. Okay. This is judgment. Um, so this is the, or is this the lovers? Let me think. Five, six. No, this is the lovers. Okay, so the lovers are... Um, Okay, that I want to say it's judgment too. You know what? I'm going to get the uh, the booklet out to make sure I'm not giving this the wrong value. So, and it's what happens when you use a lot of different cards uh, all the time. Uh, six. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, the lovers. So, so the lovers. So this is uh, justice and the lovers. I'm going to go ahead and put the last card and then do the uh, interpretation. And then the final card for this is the Queen of Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. This is Elton. So yeah, justice is, um, I think, finding that perfect balance uh, between in his life, for his kids, for his family, for his art also, which is very important. The lovers, uh, I think, is indicating his, uh, uh, you know, it's a perfect pairing. And so I think this is trying to find that perfect balance between the love for your family and the love for your art, which is very important to Elton. And then the Queen of Swords is truth, justice, rules, and law. And I feel like this Queen of Swords, this Queen of Truth, is giving me some justification for the interpretation of these first two cards. Just how I feel. So you may be completely um, have a different take on this, but the first card being justice, being uh, yeah, finding the true balance. The second card, uh, lovers, also finding the true balance between the loves of his life, which are his kids and his art. And then the Queen of swords i think this is elton john he's found the truth and i think this also gives me a verification of the first two
First time I've ever had an interpretation uh, for a Queen of Swords like that, but that just uh, felt very, very uh, appropriate. Now, the second question is, will his kids be famous performers? Will his children, he's got two, I think they're two boys, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think they are two boys. Will they be famous performers? Will Elton John's children, his two kids, will they be famous performers? One, two, three. Let's see how this works out. Because it could be that one of them is, or neither. First card out for that. This Four of Wands. This is very interesting because this uh, if wands are plans, act plans, first of all, plans, actions. Um, and this two, oh, this, sorry, this Four of Wands are short term plans towards something bigger in the future. It's interesting to me that we've got, and this is also called the, the wedding card, like a little wedding celebration. It's interesting to me that we've got two women in here. Uh, having this celebration. I don't know what significance that has, uh, although there do seem to be some other figures in the very distant background here. But this uh, short-term plans, I think perhaps they may be um, being a little bit groomed towards that. Just a little bit. To open that door if it interests them. Ah, the second card out of here with the seven of wands, set wands again, so actions, plans, uh, moving forward. And this is finding a uh, being embattled. And uh, so for me, this is a significance, significance of being compared to their dad. So yeah, there's lots of comparisons to be made here. And if one of them uh, stands out, they, that one may have to face those comparisons. I think that's inevitable. And then the final card for whether his kids will be famous performers comes just with this page of wands. This page of wands, and again, all these cards now have been wands, uh, plans, and actions. So I don't know. For some reason, I feel like this page is David Furnish. I think David Furnish is bringing this plan forward. It's a big plan, but he's got a small amount of value as this page. Remember, the page is the least um, important of the court cards. So I believe the fact is that they're being potentially groomed for that, um, but for at, at their own determination. Uh, later, so it's not being left out of their curriculum. That's how I feel about that. Okay, not a definitive answer, but uh, maybe there's not a definitive answer to be had at this young uh, time in their lives. Um, oh, my um, questions went out over here. I have to turn my uh, laptop back on. So the third question: Will David Furnish remarry after Elton is gone? So, I mean, let's face it, he's, Elton is considerably older than David. He'll go first, unless some uh, illness uh, makes this otherwise. So, will David furnish? I want to clear these cards and understand that we're talking about David Furnish. David Furnish, Elton's husband. Will he remarry after Elton is gone? No doubt that he would have some sort of partnership, but I want to know if he'll actually remarry after Elton is gone. Three cards. One, two, three. Will David Furnish remarry after Elton is gone? Okay, well, this is interesting. So this is the Chariot, the Major Arcana. These are things moving on, moving at a rapid pace. But the fact is in this card, that this the beasts that are uh, pulling this uh, Chariot have rested. Okay, so there may be some period of rest before the inevitable does uh, pick up and carry on. The second card for that is uh, this Six of Pentacles uh, doling out the value. You know, Pentacles can be, are worth, they can be money. And uh, this Six of Pentacles uh, shows us someone who's taking that uh, value and doling it out to whom he feels is appropriate. I kind of feel like this is him doling out value to the kids for some reason. It's interesting. And then the last card for that, uh, again with a page, this is a page of value. And again, it looks like at some point in the future, David Furnish becomes um, the, the, the very weakest uh, influence, although carrying you know a solid amount of value. Huh. So this uh, has spoken to me, to me more. It seems like David Furnish's uh, act of, of remarrying uh, would be... Um, very dependent on how he deals with his kids. And uh, as a matter of fact, this doesn't address being remarried. Let me take one more card, see if it gets us anywhere closer to that. Two cards wanted to come, so I'm going to take two. 
Okay. Um, will David furnish remarry after Elton's gone? The next card, then with this five of swords, an abuse of power. That's interesting. And then the final card, then with this knight of swords, and this is a young knight here, wielding the sword of truth, justice, rules, and law. You know, I think there's going to be some sort of a, 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 a conflict uh, in, uh, in this, these cards don't want to talk about him remarrying, but they do want to talk about uh, his role with the kids. So let's talk about all of this again. And what have I got here? We've got five cards. So I'm one short of a, um, a dyadic cross. I'm going to reconfigure these cards as a dyadic cross in the order that they came out. So the signifier for this, will David Furnish remarry, is uh, the chariot card, but somewhat stall. The uh, uh, challenge to that is the doling out of the value. Okay, so this has to be the estate, and there has to be some uh, challenge to him carrying on having to do with doling out the value. I wonder if there's some proviso uh, in that will about uh, David Furnish remarrying in some uh, sort of uh, period of time. The base of this reading, uh, then, with this page, is that correct? Yeah, with this page of coin, is, um, is um, this page carrying the value to the scene. That's the base of this whole thing, but it's a small um, message, okay? The past of this reading uh, with this uh, uh, five of swords is an abuse of power. So there could be some perception of him having abused um, his uh, authority, perhaps, in the uh, state of Elton. And then in the sky of this reading is this page of swords, which for me is one of the kids carrying truth, justice, rules, and law. And then the final outcome for this then, ah, is this uh, eight, and now it's starting to talk to remarriage, is this eight of swords. Again, truth, justice, rules, law. This is David Furnish being bound up by all of that. And so I think there's going to be something that happens here that causes those kids and the will and all of that involved to, to prohibit him from uh, remarrying, certainly right away anyway. Interesting that this turned into a full uh, dyadic cross for that question. Then the last uh, question I have here is about the future of Elton John. Okay, and uh, let's face it, um, you know, he's just like the rest of us. He's on the uh, other side uh, where the future is getting shorter and shorter. So the future of Elton John, let's um, turn these cards around and make sure that they understand we're talking about Elton John. Elton John talking about Elton John. So we want the future of Elton John. Tell us about the full Celtic cross, uh, the future of Elton John. We'll do six cards and then another four. Unless it seems obvious we just a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Interesting. The future of Elton John. Okay. And the signifier card for that is right here with this King of Wands. Elton has been the king of the plans for his future. He's got this laid out. The next card, uh, the challenge to that, ah, is Judgment. So, yep, yeah, this is near the end of the Major Arcana, which is appropriate when we're talking about getting towards the end of his life. And so, Judgment. So, the, um, the, the king of of wands, the king of the plans for his future, Elton John, is being challenged by judgment. And uh, this has to be not only a uh, karmic judgment, but I think uh, critical uh, judgment in the world that we're in now. The base of this reading then, ah, look, it comes back. This is still David Furnish. Uh, this is the eight of swords really being trapped. Um, okay, that's interesting. This uh, card here, wow, again, this abuse of power, this five of swords, truth, justice, rules, and law. In the past, we have an abuse of power. And, you know, I think Eldon would probably be one of the first ones to agree that he certainly had abused uh, the power of his fame uh, in many ways. The sky of this reading is the sun. Okay, this is beautiful. I think this is not only the sun shining light down on the issue. I think this is uh, probably representative of his sons and maybe even one of his sons in particular. That's interesting. The future of Elton John. And then the likely outcome for the first part of this, wow, is the Hierophant. The Hierophant is usually the rules by which something uh, works. Okay, it can be government, it can be religion. This could be his will, his actual last will and testament. So the future 
of Elton John. Last four cards. The um, wow. The um, self of that question. Ah, with this Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles is showing us someone who is completely awash in just a lot of uh, value, a lot of wealth, with the most. Uh, um, a popular diversion of the day. I always say that about the little falcon. Uh, in this uh, period of time, you had a falcon. It's because you had plenty of money to have this toy. Is uh, basically what it was uh, at a certain point. So the the self of this question is: Will a very privileged Elton John tell us about his future? The environment that that's in is again in doling out the value. He has planned this out. He has made decisions about what's going to happen with his fortune and how it's used and where it goes. That's very interesting. Okay. And um, the hopes and the fears for that, of course, the hopes for this is happy family. You know, I think Elton's uh, plans here uh, are meant to ensure that there's, you know, happy, successful, well taken care of family in the future. I'm going to suspect. I wonder, um, well, let's just finish. And then the final outcome, well, my, fumble, my fingers are fumbling about that, ah, is this knight of compassion. So the knight is the one who's been given the challenge of taking care of what the court wants it to do, and this has to deal with passion and compassion. Okay, so the final outcome of uh, Elton's future is really dealing with his legacy, and that's already been assigned uh, to someone or something to um, to be dealt with. Very interesting. I want to put this up here, but I don't want to um, diminish that card there. So let's read this one more time. So I said, tell us about Alton John's future. The signifier then came up with this um, king of wands, Elton John, king of his plans. Okay, He has made the decisions that need to be made. Challenged by what? Challenged by judgment. Karma, you could say. The basis of this reading, then, with this Eight of Swords, is, for me, this is David Furnish, feeling really bound up by the rules that are surrounding him around this legacy. The uh, past of this reading, uh, with this Five of Swords, is an abuse of power. Uh, this abuse of power could refer to Elton, or it could refer to, uh, potentially, uh, David Furnish. In the sky of this reading is a beautiful, shining sun. And uh, so I feel like this is sh shining a light down on the subject, but I also feel this represents his kids, and perhaps one of them in particular. Then uh, the final outcome for this is the government, the hierophant, the structure. Uh, this could be the 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 uh, rules of the legacy that he leaves behind, that he I'm certainly has been very thorough in laying out. The final uh, part of this, you know, here the self of that question about what about Elton's future. It shows us, it confirms this is uh, Elton with this uh, nine of uh, pentacles, just someone who being very awash and lots of value, and then um, in the environment of doling out that value as is appropriate. Yeah, this can be clear that it's talking about his his legacy, his will, and uh, the uh, hopes and the fears for that is uh, of course a happy family. This is what uh, his goal uh, is in the way that he structured uh, this thing to work out. And then the uh, likely outcome is that there will be an enforcer. There will be an enforcer who's going to make sure that things are carried out the way Elton and John intended them to be carried out. So that's his future. He's he's planned his future beyond his own uh, human future. He's planned the future of his legacy. That's what that looks like to me. Well, I hope those did him justice. I mean, he's been an influence in my life and in many people's lives for how many years now? He's 74 years old, been performing and famous since he was 20-something. So, Elton John. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.